Uh, good morning, both. And um, Bob, if I can start with you, what has gone wrong that we've got these extraordinary backlogs and a, a service that is frankly not fit for purpose? Well, there's no simple answer. We have the NHS, which is now systemically dysfunctional. We have rising demand. We have fewer doctors and nurses to meet that demand. And we, we've had successive marketization and fragmentation of the NHS, which has led to it being dysfunctional. I'll give you an example. So hospital uh, clinics are running late. We have long waiting lists. So more and more of those people who are languishing on waiting lists are having to see their GP while they're waiting. So that has increased demand. We've had the pandemic and, you know, as we were instructed by NHS England to shut our doors, which made absolutely no sense whatsoever, that has contributed to a backlog of late or, uh, you know, delays in diagnosis and knock on effects that people's conditions end up being worse when they're diagnosed and then compounded with extra delays in terms of getting hospital treatment. So we have a fragmented and dysfunctional service with rising demand and reducing workforce. So it doesn't surprise me that the figures you quote are getting worse. Dr. Mokaki, let me come uh, to you. I bet there's a, a huge amount in there that, that you agree with um, from, from Dr. Bob Gill. Uh, is, what else do you see? Why else is it going wrong in your day-to-day -day practice? Well, it's interesting. I think when you look at the figures, um, they tell their story, don't they? You've got October 36.1 million record number of appointments being seen. Um, if you look at the figures, you've got 40% of patients being seen on the day and 80% being seen within two weeks. These are official figures from the RCGP. And yet patients are still finding that the access they want isn't there. And it all comes down to the three things that we've always discussed, which are recruitment, um, we're finding it hard to plug the gaps to give enough staff members to support the NHS. Um, retaining, and, and this is really important because as we increase the demand across hospital, across uh, general practice, across primary care services, GPs and other healthcare workers are feeling absolutely exhausted, as, as Dr. Bob mentioned so, so well, that the, the pandemic has taken a huge um, demand on services, on work, and we worked extremely hard to sort of meet the demand and now that fallout is uh, is not really coming through and, and and doctors and allied healthcare professionals are finding it quite tough and of course financing new services is really important and that's not happening so all of those three um, is causing a recipe for disaster. Mm. Bob you've been campaigning about this for years you must be incredibly frustrated because I think you've been ringing this alarm bell uh, for several years several years even before the pandemic what do you think is genuinely going on in the bigger picture does this government have plans to just destroy the NHS in its current form? Well this is it, this is a cross party uh, agenda to actually engineer the NHS to fail and collapse, to destroy trust, to destroy morale. In July of this year, we had the passage of the Health and Care Act, which most people are totally unaware of, which actually restructures the NHS yet again into 42 new business, public private partnerships called integrated care systems. And these are modeled on the American system. And the American system is based on private insurance, and you also have an element of state-funded care. Now, the problem with what we've done is we've copied the worst, most expensive, poor outcome health system in the world, which is the American system, and part of the collateral damage is the delays, the preventable harm, and the pre preventable death of our patients. The government are using that to fuel the uh, middle-class flight out of the NHS into the uh, insurance market. So this is quite cynical, I'm afraid, and the solutions offered up by Labour and Conservative are not really solutions. They focus on mm. one small part of the NHS dysfunction at a time, but in reality, they are agreeing with the final destination because Labour has been totally quiet about the implications of this massive legislative change that take, took place just in July of this year.